Hi gang, Rob here, coming to you in the evening of 19 May 2013. And what I have for you tonight is sort of a, oh, just a, a look at a knife that just came off the sharpening bench a while ago. This one came uh, from a YouTube buddy, Mike I. Don't want to give you his full name because his full name is his YouTube channel. And oh, I don't know how he'd feel about that. What it is, as you can see, is a fixed blade, sort of a Bowie pattern. It's actually called an original trapper from Zollingen, Germany, produced by, or at least marketed by, GC Company, which is the Gutman Cutlery Company. They're kind of an they have sort of an interesting story. They, uh, for about 30 years here in the United States, were an importer of Puma knives. It's unclear, I think, whether they actually manufacture blades or whether they are an importer and marketing company for Zollingen makers. They have also had their name on some knives that are copies of Zollingen produced blades that are actually less expensive models of popular patterns produced in Italy. A uh, little difficult to tell whether a GC company blade was produced in Zollingen or in Italy. Uh, I think you can kind of tell by the quality of the grinding. Uh, I don't think the stag is really much different. Um, And I really can't tell you where this one was produced. It appears to be a late 70s, early 80s knife. The reason I say that is because if you can come in close here, there are remnants of a laser etched logo. This was more clear when I got the knife, and I'll explain why it's not uh, as we go on. But it does say original trapper handmade in Zollingen, Germany. So we'll assume it is a German knife for the sake of this video. The reason that that is barely intelligible at this point is because of the condition the knife came to me in and the desire of the customer. If you notice in the handle area where the full tang is exposed on the spine and the underside of the grip, uh, the knife had some rust issues, as one would expect with a knife made of plain carbon steel that's 40 years old or so. It also had some issues with prior attempts to sharpen. Um, <laughs> not very good prior attempts to sharpen. Um, here at the base of the blade, some very, very deep gouging and sort of oh, mutilation of the profile. <clears throat> It was worse on this side, and then someone over the years had attempted to sharpen this false edge or the swedge on top of the blade, which on this pattern, I mean, let's get it in full view. Why would you do that unless you were going to make it a carpet knife? Certainly doesn't need to be sharp for the knife to penetrate, and I'll guarantee you in a reverse grip slash that point is going to catch and rip all by itself without having to sharpen that upper edge. <clears throat> so, Mike did tell me he wanted me to make that upper swedge back to the original profile and sort of do my best to re-tip the knife. I think that came out really well. But then I was faced <clears throat> with these other issues. Um, I sort of had to make the rest of the knife look like the the swedge and I had bad grind issues to deal with at the base of the blade. In order to fix those the whole knife got a new hand rubbed satin finish. Uh, just used 150 grit sandpaper and a mouse pad finished with uh, 300 or 320 and, uh, and 800 and you know I didn't go too deep I just wanted to give it a uniform appearance without completely destroying uh, this piece of history. So there's a couple stains that are still left in the hand rubbed finish just for character. <clears throat> now, <laughs> sharpening this knife was interesting to say the least. 
it was hand ground when it was new and there's not a datum on the knife uh, it appears to be flat ground and I guess it's that's the grind that is closest is flat but it changes all throughout the sweep of the blade you can really see it on the swedge uh, not very consistently ground even the flat here and down the uh, hilt of the knife isn't really very flat one side's flatter than the other so it didn't give me much to work with on the Edge Pro and uh, it was a bit of a struggle. It was um, it was a knife that I almost just sent back along with the money, but uh, not because it's a bad knife. It's a really well-made knife, and the steel is just beautiful uh, when it comes to the edge. It was just difficult, and uh, it became sort of a personal thing. It took me a long time to find out what angle it wanted, uh, how to position the knife to get a pretty consistent angle from uh, tip to hilt and uh, it took a long time to get sharp Mike you got some hard steel here my friend and it's pretty tough it should perform very very well uh, a lot of these old German knives are plain carbon steel like a 10 series steel like a 1095 but with more than 1% of carbon this is probably like a 10-110 I would I would guess uh, plain carbon steel with about 1.1 percent of carbon it's very very hard it has that nice pingy sound when you hit it <clears throat> so we ended up here guys with a uh, about a 26 to 27 degrees inclusive approach bevel and that was necessary for a couple reasons number one the knife is really really thick behind the edge I mean uh, probably 50 to 60 thousandths so it really needed to be shallow and second I had to get rid of a lot of old grind marks I think it just would have looked terrible to have a near mirror polished edge followed up with deep gouges from old sharpening attempts so uh, it got what it got and I think for good reason and then I finished it off with about a 38 degree inclusive micro bevel and uh, of course it's strapped with uh, gray and green compound and I think the edge came out pretty good Mike if you're watching here's uh, here's how the knife should come back to you let's see here let's cut a little phone book paper Oh yeah, all the way through, dealing with the tip here, all the way through the blade, that thing is sharp from hilt to tip. I'd be happy. You know, we can't erase... Uh, we can't erase some of the history that's happened to this blade out over the years of its existence and it's got some scars but uh, we did our best to make it a pretty impressive and serviceable old knife I did leave the uh, the tang of the blade alone I thought you know that staining is that's uh, oil from people's hands and sweat and years and uh, I decided not to polish that off. It deserved to keep some patina, I thought. And believe me, guys, you could rake this knife over your skin anywhere you wanted when I got it, and then you were in no danger of being hurt. Uh, it is sharp now. Mike, I'm going to send this back to you. Go in the mail uh, tomorrow. You get USPS priority mail, so it should be back to you Wednesday or Thursday. If you're able, don't hesitate to make a video. Let everybody know what you think, good or bad. And guys, if you're going to send me work, be, uh, be nice. Don't send me anything this tough like once a week or anything. <laughs> but you know what? It became personal after a while. 
And when I got to the strop, it was just one of those deals, you know. It, it was work and work and work and work and work, and it wasn't happening. And then when I finally got in a groove, went through my grits and got to the strop, it was like this magical edge just started to come out. And wow, what a good one it turned out to be. I mean, I don't know. You guys that sharpen can appreciate this. With all this belly and this sweep, it is a fingernail grabber right at the tip. And that's not easy to do on a knife like this. And it does that the whole length of the blade. I'm just really, really happy. This was about three, uh, this was about three hours. Well worth it. I just love it when I get to bring some something old like this that has so much potential locked in. Uh, I love just unlocking that and bringing it out. Hope you guys like looking at it. Well, everybody, have a good rest of your evening. Grace and peace, and remember, the word is sharp. Night, guys.